But it seems like this, if you want to go full tinfoil hat, there has to be a plan. So that means there has to be conversations. There has to be a bunch of people that agree to this. Like, who are those people? And how do those conversations take place? Well, I mean, we do... Who are the people? Well, again, I just point back. The Biden administration has to have had conversations. They petitioned the Supreme Court to stop Texas from enforcing its border. Um, I would love to know what those conversations look like. Whoever's funding it at some point had to sit down at a table, probably not exactly like this. It might not have as much cool stuff on it, but they sat down and they signed some contracts and said, this is what this is where the money's going to go. Do you think it could be that it's the federal government putting power over state governments to make sure that state governments don't say we can do what we want. Well, I mean, that's the fight between Texas and the federal right. government. For, so for sure, that's that's part of it. But I think there's the United Nations that's that's kicking this too, that's pushing this. I mean, so a lot of people don't understand, this, and I'm skipping around, the United Nations sees itself as a um, kind of global entity, 193 member states, blah, 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 17 sustainable development goals to transform our world, all that. But I'm going to skip over and talk about like Soros for a second, because we know that the Open Society Foundation has pushed a lot of this kind of stuff too. And it's a lot of people don't understand Soros or what in the, what is the open society that he's talking about? Well, that's all based off of, a lot of people don't know, uh, Soros's mentor was the famous Car- Karl Popper, and Karl Popper wrote a book in 1945 called uh, Open Society and Its Enemies. And so the Open Society is what we've been taking for granted, basically, in the post-World War II era. And what's what we want. That's where it's a free society. It's a high trust society. It's a, you know, people can do what they want. They don't have to worry about, you know, whether they're going to get carjacked all the time or whatever else. And Soros is like, well, you could have that in the nation or you could have that where there's kind of one open society in the globe. So a lot of people start thinking that he's working with China, but he doesn't like China because China doesn't have an open society. That's not what he wants. But the idea that there's this line that comes across the south of Texas and New Mexico and Arizona and California, where arbitrarily, so to speak, um, the United States says this is our land and Mexicans have to stay out. He would be against that. That's not an – this should be like an open Pan-American kind of mega continent. Uh, kind of in his mind with one society. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to dissolve a border. And how can you dissolve a border? Well, make so many people be able to cross that border through changes legally and through flooding the system so that uh, the border doesn't really mean anything anymore because borders are simple, right? What is a border? It's a it's a line we draw on a map and we say laws on this side of this border mean this and laws on the other side of this border are different, right? The U.S. has law. Mexico has law, and this line is where we have U.S. law versus Mexican law on either, you know, one step across, and now you're in another set of laws. That's what they mean. That's what borders are uh, as, a, as a political entity. But if you can water that down so it's like, yeah, well, there's so many people coming across. Like, is there really a border? Are they? Well, right. That's, that's the idea because Soros's idea is a global open society. Everything in the whole globe, you know, you know, maybe I don't know if it's that extreme, but maybe you don't need passports. You don't. Cr- you, you just. Right. It's like the EU, but for the whole world. 